Every field has its Feynmans, Goodalls, Tysons, and Skinners. But what if your work isn't so brilliant? Well, work hard, the great professor Pomposity might reply. But everyone works hard. So is there anything the ordinary academic can do to climb to the top of the heap? I'm Eric Vanman, a professor of psychology at the University of Queensland in Australia. Before I proceed, I want to distinguish between how some academic greats have cheated the system by falsifying their data and possibly using other illegal means to climb the ladder to greatness. Besides the obvious legal and ethical problems faking results entails, it's also a stupid way to get ahead and damages any academic field where it happens. As I mentioned in a previous video, which you can find up here, the desire for some people to get to the top in an increasingly competitive field is often what causes these people to take the shortcut equivalent of scamming people to get rich. Instead, my guide in this video contains 13 tips for early career academics that are legal ways to get ahead. I must trust, however, that I have never followed these tips myself and perhaps maybe I would have been more successful in the early stages of my career if I had. In fact, Many people who work at research universities have no ethical qualms with any of these tips, at least according to the people I've talked to about them. In my more than 30 years in psychology, I've seen all of these in action, used by promising graduate students to senior people in the field. Sometimes the new star had a career built on a single amazing paper or two. Other times they had nothing more than just a few dodgy studies to begin with, and then they followed these tips. Yet, none of these tips should be considered necessary or sufficient conditions to reach the stratosphere. But the more of them that you follow, the more likely it is that you'll probably become an academic superstar. All right, the first one is the co-authorship pact. Picture this. You and a fellow graduate student agree to be mutual academic wingmen, co-authoring each other's papers regardless of the actual input. It's like getting a free ride on each other's hard work. I've seen this co-authorship pact many times in my field of psychology. If you go this route, you might set an expiration date to the pact, or this academic honeymoon might end in a professional divorce. The secret cabal. Form a professional cabal among a group of other aspiring superstars in your field. In the truest sense of this word, make sure that the cabal is a secret. Then, agree to give each other favorable manuscripts and grant proposal reviews without disclosing the existence of your cabal to anyone else. It's like having your personal academic avengers, but remember, mum's the word on this one. Early on, I learned about a group of academics who did this and invited my friend to join them, but not me. The original rule was that you had to be under 35 to become a member. But as the original members got older, the age requirement was dropped. And as far as I know, the group is still out there, but they keep a low profile. Pretend to know it all. Master the art of pretense. In academia, appearing knowledgeable is half the battle won. Haven't read the paper? No problem. Just nod sagely and look bored. It's all about faking it until you make it. Prestige over substance. Getting your PhD from a famous university can sometimes matter more than the quality of your training or your department. It's the brand that counts. So you might want to seek out those Ivy League credentials just in order to have them on your record. The Superstar Advisor. Having an advisor who's a famous academic VIP can be your golden ticket. They can introduce you to the right circles, making your academic networking a walk in the park. I've seen this work with famous advisors who are virtual recluses. A simple email from them might be all it takes to open a door or get you an interview. Exclusive conferences. Get invited to small conferences that are invitation only or not well advertised, especially those held at castles, former monasteries, and beachside resorts. These are your backstage passes to rubbing shoulders with the academic elite. Remember, it's not just about who you know, but also where you go. The gift of authorship. When you write papers, offer gift authorships to current academic stars. Having someone famous as a co-author, even if they don't get a chance to read the manuscript, will impress editors, reviewers, and grant agencies. Surprisingly, many academic stars have no qualms about accepting such gifts. It's a win-win. They get another line on their CV, and you get a sprinkle of their star power on your work. 
Be controversial. Stir the pot by being controversial. Pen in an opinion piece that challenges the status quo. The New York Times is an ideal outlet for this. Don't have evidence yet? No worries. The academic world loves a bold, if not entirely substantiated claim. Money magnetism. Stay close to the money. In academia, funds attract more funds, and many academics hoard them. Befriend those with big grants, and some of that golden dust might just fall your way. Questionable research practices. Engage in questionable research practices. Go ahead and p-hack, hark, and run as many underpowered studies as you can. You're sure to find a fascinating false positive eventually. If someone calls you out on these practices, claim that this is what people in my area always do, or I wish we had known about the better practices when I started this research. Rename an old problem. This is the old wine in a new bottle trick. Take an existing, perhaps even forgotten problem, slap a fancy new term on it, and voila, you're an innovator. Perhaps edit a special journal issue or a book devoted to your new problem. And don't forget to host an exclusive conference about it for maximum impact. Research over teaching. Protect your research time at all costs. Teaching weighs down the rising star, so invite others to guest lecture for you. Hopefully, the only undergraduates you'll ever know are the ones working in your lab group, and they will probably do it for free. Choose power and perks. Be terribly selective about any potential departmental or professional society commitments. Only choose to participate in those that garner the most power and or perks. And here's a final note. When you finally reach the top, don't forget that you must defend the hierarchy from would-be foes. Remember to close the door behind you as you enter the land of exclusivity. Be scathing in your reviews of others' manuscripts and proposals. Hoard your research money and remember that you can never have enough of it. You don't really need those people standing outside the club anymore. You're in the upper echelons of the academy now. And there you have it, my cynical roadmap to academic fame. Remember, these tips are more for laughs than actual advice. And I should mention that I also asked ChatGPT 4.0 to come up with 13 similar tips. I'll quickly share that list here with you. There's some overlap with my list, but it includes more evil tricks than I didn't think of. At your request, here are 13 cynical, though not illegal, ways to get ahead in academia that fall into ethically gray areas. Remember, these methods are not recommended as they compromise ethical standards and can have long-term negative impacts on both personal and professional reputations. 1. Excessive flattery and ingratiation. Building relationships with influential academics by excessively flattering them, even if it feels insincere or exaggerated. 2. Taking credit for collaborative work. Positioning oneself as the primary contributor in group projects or co-authored papers, even when the contribution was equal or less. Overpromising in grant applications. Making overly ambitious or unrealistic promises in grant applications to secure funding. Manipulating data presentation. Presenting data in a way that overly accentuates positive results while downplaying or omitting negative or less favorable outcomes. Number five, cultivating a persona of false humility. Projecting an image of modesty and self-effacement while subtly promoting one's own achievements and capabilities. Six, networking for opportunistic reasons. Engaging in networking primarily for personal gain rather than for mutual or scholarly benefit. Seven, gatekeeping or withholding information. Deliberately withhold helpful information or resources from peers to maintain a competitive advantage. Eight, engaging in excessive self-citation overciting one's own work to artificially inflate citation metrics and perceived impact. Nine, exploiting loopholes in ethical guidelines, taking advantage of gray areas and in institutional ethical guidelines for personal gain. 10, strategic authorship arrangements, adding or insisting on being added as an author on papers where the contribution was minimal or non-existent. 11, selective sharing of positive peer reviews, sharing only positive aspects of peer reviews when discussing one's work while omitting criticisms or suggestions for improvement. 12. Manipulating student evaluations. Influencing students to give positive course evaluations through favoritism, leniency in grading, or other indirect means. And 13. Sabotaging peers. Subtly undermining colleagues' work or reputation to appear more competent or to gain a relative advantage. As I finish, let me remind you that I have never followed any of this advice. 
What I strongly believe is that true academic success is built on integrity, hard work, and genuine curiosity. So take these tips with a grain of salt and chart your own honest path to the top. I'm curious though about whether you have seen any of these in action and whether you think any of these are actually good advice. So please leave a comment below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into the academic world served with a side of humor. See you in the next video where we keep it real and academically interesting.